Hi everyone, Sophia here from mygreatchallenge.blogspot.com. This is it. Today's the day I am building my bouquet. So you are in my garage. See the garage? Here's the wood. I just got it uh, yesterday at the Home Depot. These are, uh, let me see, they are 2 by 12 by 12. And that's all I'm using to build the entire frame of the bookcase as well as the shelf. I have a total of 8 big planks of wood. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you a quick drawing of um, the bookcase so you get an idea of what it is that I'm doing. Don't mind the mess, we're in the garage. Um, I did that earlier in the kitchen this morning so I'm going to insert that right now and you get to see it and the first thing we're going to do since you're going to see the drawing is the plate that goes at the bottom and gets anchored into the floor of the office. So that one, I believe, I gotta check my drawing, is 69 inch. So it's just a matter of cutting it. It doesn't need to be sanded because it's gonna be covered by another one on top. But here's the drawing so you get an idea of what I'm doing and then when we come back, I'll start cutting. Okay, so before I go ahead and start chopping the wood, I just want to give you a quick drawing of what the bookcase is going to look like. So let's just say that this is my wall, right? And you remember I got the door just about right here. And I have the light switch here and the plug here. The bookcase is going to go from floor to ceiling in between those two. It's going to go in between the light switch and the uh, plug right here, okay? So, what I'm gonna do is a plate right here that's gonna go directly into the floor. So, there's gonna be a plate right here that's gonna go directly onto the floor. On this plate, I'm going to put one upright here that's eight feet tall. It's gonna go all the way to the ceiling and there's gonna be another one like this. Okay, so if you look at it this way, the plate is going to be this way, and then the upright is going to be this way. This is going to be anchored into the floor, and this is going to be anchored into the floor at a 45 degree angle, and same thing here into the plate. All right, and then it's going to be anchored this way into the wall, and I have the same plate all the way on the top right here. All right, that one is going to be anchored into the ceiling and then the upright right here is going to be anchored at a 45 degree angle into the one that's on the top. You get the idea? All right. Now, right here, I'm going to have inserts, pieces of wood that are going to be like this. On top of this, there's going to be another plate. That's going to be the bottom of my shelf. I'm going to have another upright right here in the middle. Okay, so this one is going to be anchored like this at a 45 degree angle, same thing here, same thing here, all right? Um, the top part itself, right, I'm going to face it in the front with a piece of wood that's flat. I'm going to call that the molding, the crown molding, even though it's not going to be one of those that's um, slanted like this, if you see what I mean. It's just going to be... A flat part. Why? Because this house is 1920s, 1930s. They didn't have that kind of design. In here, to hide this hollow area right here, there's going to be another plate as well. That's going to be the base that's going to be covered. All right. And then all I have to do is insert the little pieces of wood or fairing like this to add the shelves on top. So there's going to be probably five shelves um, on each side. Okay, And then in the front here, just to give it a finished look, I'm going to put a panel, a piece of fairing, same thing here, and one right here, just to kind of give it a, uh, um, a you know, more custom look. Now the wood is not the greatest quality, it's uh, regular lumber. So I'm going to paint everything in white, but the sides right here are probably going to have a uh, piece of very thin plywood that I'm going to adhere with nails, 
finishing nails and glue same thing over there and I may do it at the bottom here and on the top as well um, on the underside just to you know make the wood a little bit cleaner have less rough uh, texture to it and I'm not doing anything in the back so the back is going to be blue all right so um, I already measured, I marked what I need on the floor in the uh, office. I know that from here to here, this is 69 inch. Each of the shelves is going to be three, 33 and 3 quarter. And then this one here is exactly 8 feet. This one is a little bit under, so the house is a tiny, tiny bit crooked. But that's basically what I'm doing. So today I'm going to start by building this plate here. And then the support right here, the uprights, and then the plate that goes on top. And if I have time, I'll probably finish the one in the middle and the plate that goes on the top. In the next video, I'll do the shelves and the molding that goes on the top and the baseboard. And that would be it. Okay, so now you have an idea of what it is that I'm doing. So, I'm starting with my first plank right here. And I just want to show you something about rough cuts when you go to the Home Depot. See, I have this uh, square thing right here, and when you put it this way, it shows right here. You see the gap? Oops, I just hit the camera. You see the gap? So, you can't go by what the Home Depot gives you. All right, so I need to shorten this plank just a tiny bit so that I have a straight cut. And I'm taking advantage of the fact that I have this gap right here because it's not the perfect, perfect one. And what I'm going to do is just basically use my square, mark where I want to cut it and just go ahead and cut. That way I have a perfect square cut. All right, let's go. All right, so I just made my cut. Let me see if I'm squared. See, look, no gap, perfect. All right, so now that I've squared my end right here, I'm going to do my first board, which is my bottom plate that goes straight into the floor. I'm marking my 69 inch right here. I'm going to use my square. And all I have to do is mark a line for the 69 with my pencil across the entire board and make my cut. Here we go. Alright, so this part right here is going to be my bottom uh, plate. So this board right here is exactly 69. Alright, so now let me show you a quick drawing on it. And again, it's at the bottom, so I don't care. Um, if this is my wall, right, I have a baseboard right here on the wall. And that plate that I just created is going to go right here and it's going to be anchored in the uh, um, baseboard and directly into the floor. However, that plate needs to be shorter than the one that goes on top. Why? Because it's against the baseboard and that's about an inch. So what I got to do right now is mark an inch off right here on the edges of my 69 inch board and I'm going to do something that's called ripping the board where I'm going to just take off an entire inch throughout the entire length of the board. Am I making sense? I hope I am. So I have my 69 inch um, bottom plate. I'm going to do my two uprights that go on the side, on the left side and on the right side. And I'm doing the same process. I'm going to square it off just to make sure that I have a perfectly square end right here. And I have a crack that goes all the way up to here anyway. So I'm going to cut this, right? And then this length right here needs to be eight feet, okay? So I might as well cut this now, then I'll measure my eight feet. I hope you don't mind my explaining you what's going on here. So this board right here is an upright. That's an upright that goes like this, right, on the side. That's the height of the bookcase. Okay. So at the bottom right here, I have the baseboard, which I'm not removing. It's the old baseboard from the, uh, the house. So I'm making a notch. You see this right here? That's a little bit over 8 inches tall um, and 1 inch deep. 
So this is going to be cut out where I put the uh, gray area right here. That way I can flush this against the wall and it's going to touch right here the baseboard and right here it's going to touch the wall. On the other end, after I'm done with my eight feet, right, so I'm going to have this that's going to be notched. Right here, I got to notch it by about one and two inches because I have the old crown molding that's on the wall. I am not ripping that one either. So this is notched here and this is notched here. I hope I'm making sense. All right, so this is my eight foot board right here with my notch for the baseboard. Now when you have the uh, circular saw, you gotta go a little bit further here and here in a crisscross pattern so you can get it because the saw is rounded. So even though you think you've got your measurement, you're still missing a whole bunch that's on this side. And then for the uh, crumb molding that's on the ceiling, I did a 45 degree angle at a little bit under two inch on each side. You just mark two inch here, two inch here, make a line and notch it. And that should give me enough room, if you can see that, for my crown molding. So I have the wall right here, the ceiling on this side, and there's going to be a notch here to accommodate the crown molding that's still on the um, on the wall in the office. So uh, you guys, I'm not gonna show you every single one of the cuts I have to make, because otherwise I'll be cutting for two days. It takes a long time to prep and put the camera on the tripod and all of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish my cuts. I'm going to do my base and my two uprights and probably the top part that goes into the ceiling. And then we'll go in the office once I'm done with that and I'll show you how to install them. All right. Okay. So before I go upstairs, this is my last board. I just want to show you something because it's important if you're going to paint or refinish your wood. If you want just a rough look, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to have a nice surface, now, you see there's a groove right here. You see that? Okay, so that's typical of the kind of lumber you get from the Home Depot and, and those box uh, stores. So what I'm going to do now is just for this one panel at least, because that's the only one so far that has this little groove right here. I got my sander. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and sand the whole surface, that way I have a nice smooth surface that I'm going to, to be able to paint, even though this particular panel here where I have my hand is on the inside of the bookcase, I still want a nice finished look. So I'm going to go ahead, sand this, and then I'll go upstairs. Alright, let's go. So I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. See how I still have a groove? Okay, this part was not sanded. And now we're getting to the part that has been sanded. See? No more groove. Perfect. All right, let me finish this and we'll go upstairs. Whew, I'm back in the office. Let me tell you, it was hard work to bring those boards upstairs, but they have been sanded. Uh, generally speaking, you want to sand your wood anyway because it's easier to paint over it. But I've already positioned them. Um, so again, if you remember, I have the bottom plate right here and here are my two uprights. So this one is a little bit shorter because the wall is not straight. If you see my plate and I put it straight one way and the other, right? You see how my, um, this is nice and flush, but this is kind of coming off a little bit. So I'm gonna have to probably shim it and do a whole bunch of stuff with the plum. But if you look at it here, it's pretty much perfect, which is great because that's the one side that you're going to see the most when you come in. Um, it's flush to the ceiling. I have my little notch right here so I don't disturb my crumb molding. And look at the gaps. That's the wall that is not straight. That's okay. I anticipated that. I knew it was going to happen. I am not mad about it, but I'm still going to anchor those into the ceiling and the wall and the bottom plate right here. All right, so I got to take a break because I'm really tired at this point and uh, probably have a cup of tea and a snack. And um, yeah, so let me pull out a little bit. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see much, but when you come in, you have the uh, door right here and the size of the bookcase is pretty much going to be this whole thing right here. Remember, I'm gonna do another upright right here in the middle 
and the shelves are going to be this way, this way, this way, and then same thing here, 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 and here. Now, there's a space right here because I thought that was 8 inches and it's not, so I notched it a little bit too much. That's not a big deal. Again, I'm going to have a uh, baseboard right here, and this part right here, I'll probably just plug it and put some plaster um, to cover it. And I want to put some plaster on these as well, the knots, because believe it or not, after a few years, the sap um, sips through and you start having a white surface with some yellow stains. So that's if you don't prime it properly. But if I put some plaster, it won't show. Okay, All right, let me take a break and then I'll show you how to drill this thing into the, uh, the floor itself. Okay, so here's the board that's by the window. And like I said, I needed to make sure it was uh, plumb. You see the uh, bubble right here? So I put a shim right here underneath it. And what I'm gonna do, I'm trying to do that with my hands. Okay, so what I need to do right now is just right there at the edge, I'm gonna put a mark and this is where I'm gonna cut my shim. So that little piece that's underneath, you see that on the right, is gonna stay under and then this part here I can discard. Okay, so here I'm perfectly flushed, you see that? And it's pretty good over there, but my wall is not straight. So I had to move the board here forward so that I have it flushed here. In order to do that, I put some shim right here temporarily in the back of it, just enough to hold it so that I can put my holes, um, pre-drill my holes for my uh, screws and affix this board onto the floor. All right, I already put a, a temporary um, screw over there just to hold it for now. I made sure that this corner right here is nicely flush to my um, upright. Put a little bit of a shim right here to hold it in place because as I'm pre-drilling for my screw, I wanna make sure that this board doesn't move. And I'm doing this at a slight um, angle. I'm gonna have to move the uh, wire um, here instead. But I'm gonna do it at a slight angle, not 45 degree, but slightly this way, going this way, all right? Let me change my um, position and then I'll show you what it looks like. And the reason why I wanna put a uh, screw on an angle here is that when I put the uprights and I'm screwing the uprights into this part here and into the wall, I don't want this particular plate here to move, all right? We just get going. Simple, light angle. very gentle with that kind of bit. Um, let me show you what it looks like. This is a wood bit that's four inches uh, long. They are very, very fragile and will snap easily. All right, let's put the screw in, following the same angle. So I have two screws going at a 45 degree angle. Um, I'm gonna show you right here. Um, at the bottom right here, they're going inside this panel and then the one at the bottom. And this is what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna pre-drill two holes, one here and one here. They're going at a 45 degree angle like this and they're gonna grab this entire upright a good portion of the plate and a little bit of the uh, floor in order to secure them. Then eventually I'm going to put another piece of wood right here with the second plate that's going to be the bottom of the shelves and those are going to be anchored to it as well. So that's going to solidify the whole bottom of the bookcase. Right here, I'll do a little bit of a uh, hole just so that my bit has something to grab on.
So I have my middle board in. Um, here it is. And I just want to show you what I'm doing here. You see there's a space here between the ceiling and that board. It's basically lower right here than those two. That's because I'm getting another one of those plates, that's 69 inch, and it's going to be inserted right here. So it's going to be um, anchored this way here, uh, toenailed here, or you know, anchored in an angle, and same thing over there. Now, here at the bottom, I'm putting four supports. I'm use I use this just to make sure I had the um, um, the shelf leveled. So I have one support here, and I'm gonna have another one this way and another one. This way, these are not the right ones, but you get the idea. And then the fourth one that way. So the bottom shelf for my bookcase is going to rest on this. It's going to go this way. All right. So it's going to look something like this, basically. Now, this part right here and this part right here at the bottom, I'm going to use as nailers. And that's where the baseboard is going to go. So the shelf itself is not going all the way at the bottom. It's actually starting at about, that's about nine inches off the floor. Okay. All right. So let me install um, those blocks and I'll show you what it looks like. And then I'll put the uh, top part and uh, I don't know if I'll be done for the day. Maybe I'll do the bottom shelves. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to start by, again, just giving myself... Something to grip on. I'm going at a 45 degree angle. damage a little bit underneath here because again this is going to be hidden by the um, baseboard okay this is solid it's not going anywhere I'm going to install my blocks on either side of all of the uprights and a quick update on where I'm at all right so all of my bottom blocks are in all right um, this can move a little bit more to the right to be plumb and same thing with this one here needs to be moved in a little bit to be plumb. This one right here, you can barely move. I mean, you can tell this is seriously, seriously sturdy. So I need to cut two shelves that are going to be 33 and a half, 33 and three quarter. Um, one that goes here, one that goes there, and then the one that goes on the top and the entire frame will be built. Look what I wrote. Okay, it's probably going to fade away, but I'm thinking about putting a time capsule in it because this is this part here. This part here because it's uh, going to be covered by your baseboard. All of this here is going to be hollow with nothing in it and not accessible at all. So I was thinking about putting a time capsule in there and then maybe, you know, 50 years from now when the guys either keep the house or somebody rips this thing apart. I hope they don't um, because I'm building it to last. They'll find it. But anyway, so this is what it looks like as of now without the top okay um really really liking it this is sturdy it doesn't look like it's going anywhere i can tell you that um yeah the only thing again this is shorter so this is going to need to be anchored um directly onto the uh, the top part and then i have to drill them um at an angle into the ceiling and that would be it all right let me finish my cuts well all i can say is that this is shipping along quite nicely look I have those two shelves. They're not fixed yet. I just placed them so they're fitting pretty good. This one in particular is fitting good. This one's a little bit off. But what I'll do is that I'll put a shim in there and then, you know, once you cork everything, you won't see it. And then I have the top board installed, but it's not screwed in. Now, in order for me to put my screws in there while holding this board um, leveled or plumb, rather, I have to use my artificial hand, which is this contraption here. I put my, um, um, whatever you call it, the miter uh, box and another piece of block right here to hold this perfectly plumb. That way I can go ahead and work on the shelf 
or the plate that's over there and bring it in and then once that's set up then I'll have to do this one and bring it in a little bit and that's going to probably give me a little bit more room to play with here at which point I'll be ready to do this one. Okay so again there's going to be a baseboard right here and this is the bottom shelf and everything else is going to be shelf, 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 shelves and then there's going to be a crown molding right here and then a uh, plate in the front here and another one right here. Maybe I'll do a, a decorated one or just a flat one. I don't know yet. Okay. All right. Let me get started. This is the part where it's getting a little crazy. I don't know if you can see, but I have some shins here between the ceiling and my top plate. And the reason why I put that there is to hold this while I'm drilling. I'm going straight like this, um, perpendicular into this board. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is that I don't really care if I have screws on the outside because again, um, I'm going to either put a plate over this in some kind of plywood or just, you know, really, really sinker it in and then put a little bit of plaster and that's it. So I'm going to do my drill hole. <laughs> so you see here it is you can barely see it it's uh, synced in anyway and remember I have a, uh, uh, a piece of crown molding that goes here but I just want to show you something I'm shaking this thing like there's no tomorrow and it is absolutely not moving so I almost have like a fake built-in bookcase it's exactly what I wanted I did put one screw right here at a 45 degree angle that goes inside the wall right here you can't see it at all so that's just to stabilize this one I did the same thing here and the same thing on this level here but this one I didn't I wasn't able to get it all the way through so I have to take it out and put another one so now I'm going to do the same thing on this side that I did over there and then this one right here I'll just do a 45 degree angle just to stabilize it a little bit but otherwise this bookcase is not Moving. Excellent. Well, I hereby declare a job well done. I said I was going to build the frame for this bookcase today and I did just that. So to recap, this is anchored in the wall right here on the side, each one of them. And then this here is anchored to the bottom plate which is anchored inside the floor all right so this thing pretty much is not going anywhere um i did screw in those uh, corners right here and again if you recall i have a gap right here that's my fault i didn't measure properly or maybe i wasn't that careful that's um, put a shim in it and then, you know, cover it. And I've already measured where I want my shelf. So that's what I'm going to do in the next video. Every shelf is going to be the same thickness than this wood right here, which is one and a half. All right. They call them two by 10 by 12 or two by eight by 10, whichever. But that's, they sell it to you as being a two, but it's not a, a true two. It's actually one and a half. So. I want most of the shelves to be 13 inches tall. The reason for that is that we have books that are art books, we have memorabilia, things like this that are tall, and I don't want to have to put them flat. I know some of them I'm still going to have to put flat, but 13 is good for me. So I've counted one here, 13, and this is going to be the thickness of the shelf itself, so that's one and a half. I have another one here at 13. This is the thickness of the next shelf. 13, another shelf, 13, another shelf, 13, another shelf, and the last one, I don't know if you can see my little number right here, that's the 12 inch, all right? So the shelf that's all the way on the top is the one that's going to be the uh, narrowest shelf for the uh, shortest one, I don't know how to say it. So that one is gonna be uh, a foot, and then every one underneath that is gonna be 13. That's leaving me with one here, and then five here. So that's six shelves that are going to be on this side and six here for a total of 12 shelves. Now, let me pull back a little bit um, so you can see it from this 
and far end of the corner now when my husband's desk was there there were shelves if you remember that were right here we had two four six seven shelves and now I'm gonna have um, 12 altogether. So I've almost doubled the space. They're also deeper, sturdier, so there's a lot of things I'm gonna be able to put in. All right, so that's the end of this video. In the next video, I'm going to create the stays. Uh, there are pretty much pieces of wood, like uh, fairing strip, things like this, that I'm going to put in here, screw in, and then cut all of the shelves, and they're just gonna rest onto the, um, the stays. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do. And then the next project will be uh, to do the baseboard right here. I'm going to have to find out what we're going to stash in there. It's not going to be accessible, but there may be some memorabilia things. Um, you know, like like I said, the uh, time capsule, things like this. Where are you going? Getting the tape measure. What do you need the tape measure for? What project are you in? What? No, what project are you doing on your own? See ya! Bye! Uh, so, where was I? Um, yeah, so, we're probably gonna stash some stuff in there that's never gonna be accessed ever, at least not in our lifetime. So, I was thinking maybe about putting the, uh, um, my first dog ashes in there, because I still have the can of that, so. That would be a good place for it, and then I want the kids to put time capsules in there, but then it's gonna be pretty much sealed. Do the one that goes on the top, and I'm trying to figure out if I really want to do one over here because I did send them pretty good, and you can tell when I sent them, I actually beveled them um, as well. So I'm actually leave the uh, spines like this. I don't know. You got to think about it. Anyway, um, I am exhausted. The light is horrible in here. It's 7.45 and I didn't make dinner yet, so I have to order something in, probably pizza, whatever. I'll have a salad and a soup. And uh, yeah, so tomorrow I'll edit the video, so you'll probably see that on Thursday. And then Friday I'll come back in here and do the rest of the shelf. The hardest part is done. It was just basically building the whole thing. Uh, to be honest, the hardest, hardest part was doing the corner over here and getting those uh, screws at a 45 degree angle because there was, you know, not a lot of space and it's a goofy angle and it's also on the left and I'm a righty so that was tough to do. Otherwise, I'm very happy with the way it looks so far. It's super, super sturdy. I mean, you just can't take this thing down at all. It is completely anchored. Oh, and um, the one right here as well. I can show you this one. I put one right here that's going at a 45 degree angle and it's catching uh, this one and it's going into the, uh, um, the top part as well. So that gives an extra level of sturdiness, I guess. Okay. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Give me a thumbs up if you like my project. Subscribe if you knew. This was Sophia from my greatchallenge.blogspot.com. I will see you next time when I'm installing my shelves. Bye.